My name is Dawn Scott and I am a senior colour designer at Dulux Trade. My role is primarily to provide colour schemes for commercial buildings and also to support architects, designers and specifiers with their colour schemes. My um, journey started um, as an interior designer a mere 20 years ago um, and uh, when I first started um, uh, studying and learning about interior design I started to discover that colour has a profound effect on a lot of people and it was something that really interested me and over the years that's just become a bit of a passion um, more recently my daughter was diagnosed with autism so I now have kind of a whole other layer of um, understanding and passion about inclusive design and how colour can be used to make spaces better for everyone that uses them. Neurodiversity is an umbrella term which essentially applies to the whole of the population. So neuro is our brains and diversity is how di diverse everybody is. So um, that's kind of the umbrella term and then under that there are three main neurological profiles. So there is neurotypical which is the majority of people and their neurological profiles. Then there is neurodegenerative which is um, that encompasses things like Alzheimer's, um, which is a form of dementia, and Parkinson's. So that's um, kind of where somebody's neurological profile will kind of change over a period of time. And then there is neurodivergent, which um, encompasses things like ADHD, autism, dyslexia, Tourette's syndrome, to name a few. The Equality Act is a, um, a legal framework that um, puts the emphasis on building owners and managers. So it's not necessarily about people, it's about buildings. And essentially it requires that a building, when it's being designed or refurbished or anything, um, you need to give consideration to the potential for all people to use a building. Colour can contribute to creating an inclusive design, um, essentially by the careful consideration of colour and where you're going to apply it and the different people that are using the space. So there are some kind of base level requirements that people need to think about with regard to colour and contrast, which is set out in Building Regulations Part M and also British Standard BS 8300. But then on top of that, there's lots of other considerations. So there's um, various kind of research around colour for people that are neurodivergent and um, that talks more about different types of colour. The same for those that are neurodegenerative, so those people that have dementia. There's various guidelines around um, the different types of colour and the saturation of colour. The misconception about using biophilic design is because it's nature inspired colours and patterns and textures, when people think about nature inspired colours, they automatically assume that that's blues and greens. However, every colour is found in nature. So one of the things I always say is, yes, let's take the, the kind of nature inspired palettes at base level, but then let's look at the other colours that we find in nature and how can we use those as pops of interest. So when you're selecting colours for an inclusive space, what you essentially need to think about is the different uses of the different areas of space. So, for example, if you're designing some spaces where it needs to be calm, then the colours chosen and the colour palette for that needs to uh, kind of apply to that. But the extra layer that comes with inclusive design is essentially about giving people that are going to use that space the choice to go to the spaces that they feel most comfortable with because some people with um, sensory differences might prefer kind of more muted sort of colours but then equally somebody who's neurodivergent might thrive off really bold, vibrant, saturated colours. My top tip for people who are designing inclusive spaces is to uh, do research on the people using the space and don't assume that you know what they're going to need. <music>